Welcome to Eat Me! I'm Michalina. And I'm Gabriella. And we're here in Seaport to visit the brand new French patisserie, Paris Cape Town. We're here at 7.30 in the morning because this place gets sold out super quickly. Now let's go see if we can talk to the owner. Hello! Good morning, Laura. Good morning. I'm Michalina. And I'm Gabriella. Nice to meet you, ladies. And um, we have come to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Why did you decide to open a French patisserie in Cape Town? So, I decided to open a, a, a bakery. At the beginning, I was supposed to go to Asia, but one friend, one friend of mine told me you should come to Cape Town because life is beautiful in Cape Town. So, I came a couple of times. And uh, yeah, I fell in love with the city and more of that, I went in the neighborhood and I saw that nobody uh, offered French pastries yet. So I said to myself, okay, this is where I want to go, this is when I want to start my business. And that's why I decided to be in Seapoint and to open the bakery. What makes this patisserie so special? Oh, you know, it's very simple. Uh, everything uh, is fresh, it's bakery. Is, is made uh, uh, every night. So we have two chefs, one for the bread, his name is Thierry, and uh, the other one is coming tomorrow from France. We, he will be in charge of the pastries, of the fine pastries, okay? And uh, so everything, everything you see is made through uh, um, French techniques. That's, that makes us very different of what you already have in Cape Town. Every country has its own way to bake bread or to knead bread, etc. Uh, uh, we are doing it in the French way. That means it takes us time. Every, every, every dough you see has been uh, um, in Puga for at least 24 hours. So everything you, you can see that there, there uh, has been prepared yesterday. So it's always like um, a, a continuum flow of work. And we have uh, um, like big machines, this big oven, which is very sp special as well. As you can see, it's a big one. You can bake dozens of baguettes in the same time. Wow. And bake, yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And it, it comes from directly from Italy. If you had to choose one, which would your favorite pastry be and why? It's complicated because, you know, I'm French. I like to eat, as you can see, on my belly. <laughs> Uh, but I would say the, the croissant. Croissant is very typical French and it's what people in Paris uh, 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 co uh, buy every morning, you know, uh, before going to work. Because the French guy, they are coming in, into the bakery twice a day in the morning to get a croissant, to have a coffee, to sit down and to read the newspaper before going to work. And the second time is after work, when they go back home, and then they buy a baguette for the dinner. You know, in France, we eat a lot of bread. A lot, a lot. That's why you have so, so many different kinds of breads. So we, we like the bread. And, uh, and uh, every family, every people in France, at least eat one baguette a day for, for the lunch, for the dinner. Even in the, in the morning, my breakfast is, cut, is, is a baguette cut in half. I put butter on it with marmalade or jam. And I, and I, uh, I uh, dip it in my coffee. Best breakfast ever. Why is the almond croissant flat, but the regular croissant fluffy? The main reason is, you know, the, the almond croissant, they are dipped into a syrup. So, so actually we take old croissant. We need, we need the croissant to be a bit old. Then when we dip them in the, in the syrup, they don't become too soft and they, they, they keep their, their shape, okay? So we put it, we dip them in the syrup, we let them dry, then we had the, the um, almond cream in the middle, so we cut them, of course, in two, put the almond cream, put the, the top on it again, almond cream again on the top, and then the, the flakes, almond flakes on it, and then we bake them a second time. I've heard that you're importing two tons of butter, may I ask why? Can you tell us? Why butter is so important for croissant and for the pan chocolat? Yeah, the butter is, uh, is the main, uh, main ingredient for croissant. Uh, in France, there is a special butter for croissant. It's 80% fat. It's special made for croissant. 
here in South Africa, we don't find the butter like that. So the butter is not made for poisson. So sometimes the butter is good, sometimes the butter is full of water, sometimes the butter is not, uh, is not working right. So you have to, to change all the time the recipe. So it's why but we bring in butter from France because it's the best. And just a quick question for our, uh, our ladies. How long would it take since the first step when you are doing the, the, the dough, okay? The first move you are doing and the, the, the last one. The baking? Yeah. Uh, Before, yeah. When you shave it, when you prepare it and when you bake it. Well, How long does it take? Well, um, it's nine o'clock. Uh, I mix the dough for croissant now. I leave it one hour outside to put it in the chiller to get cold. And tonight at nine o'clock, so 12 hours later, mm -hmm. you put your butter in. Oh wow. Yeah. You can even do it the following day. The result of a good product that is bread or everything is the is to do it before. If you rush, you know you do everything quickly, you're gonna have a good product. So the croissant, the dough is mixed today. The butter going to tonight at 9 o'clock. Three, four hours later, you cut the croissant. Two, three hours later, you bake them. You bake them. Wow, that's a long time to just make one batch of bread for croissant. Can we please have two of everything sweet? Of course, of course. You want it to take away? Here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, it was lovely chatting to you. We look forward to trying all the different tastes. Thank you very much for coming. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Okay, now that we're back in our studio bedroom, we can finally eat because I'm starving. This is gonna be my breakfast today. Okay, Gabriella, that's enough. I wanna eat food. Now let's start with the plain croissant. It's Yo. as light as a feather. Yo, this is so light and it's <laughs> so beautiful. Like the, what are these? The look pockets. At all, look at all the layers. Oh, that's really pretty. It looks so pretty and it, I'm excited to eat this. <laughs> that's so fluffy. It's so soft. You can definitely taste the butter and it's just like, it tastes so good and it's so soft and like when I bit into it, it the whole thing like smooshed down and now it's like rising and it's so like bouncy and it's fluffy. So fluffy. Very. This is the lightest thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> this is probably the best croissant I've ever had. Time to move on to the pain au chocolat, which is basically a croissant filled with chocolate. It smells different to the last one mainly because of the chocolate. I think it, it smells like dark chocolate. It definitely smells like dark chocolate. That's dark chocolate. That's really yum. The croissant adds a little bit of sweetness to the dark chocolate and when you bite into it, the dark chocolate adds that little bit of like crunch to it and it's just... It's so yum. I think I prefer the plain because I'm not the biggest fan of dark chocolate. I think I might also prefer the plain simply because of how fluffy it is and I feel like there's more of a buttery taste in the plain croissant. But this is still delicious. Yes, it's still very good. Next we're having the almond croissant. This one's so much flatter. It's not as fluffy I don't think. That's because of all the cream inside it. Oh, it's like a big layer. You can see that um, the layers of pastry are much closer together because of the actual cream. That smells like nuts. <laughs> it smells so nutty. <laughs> that looks Yo, so that's so good. You definitely get that almond flavor, and then the almonds on the top add like the sweet little crunch, crunch. To it as soon as you bite into it and it's just I think mm. they toasted the almonds on the top because it tastes really crunchy cream in between it's like it sort of softens the dough and then it, it gives it a different texture and it just it, it tastes so nice 
This one doesn't feel as light because I'm guessing because of the cream inside of it. It's definitely a lot denser than the other croissants, but I don't know. This one and the plain croissants are battling for first right now. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I think I still prefer the plain croissants. Okay, now to move on to the almond and chocolate croissants. We have quite a few croissants, but this is the last one. <laughs> Ooh. That looks like a slice of cake. Dark chocolate. This one doesn't have the cream in it. Yes, it does. You can smell the cream. That's oh. why it's so thick here. The cream, the almond cream, makes the dark chocolate a lot sweeter. So when you first bite into it, it tastes almost like a normal milk chocolate. And then once you eat more, uh, the almond taste fades away and then you get the dark chocolate taste and it tastes so good. The combination of the croissant, the almond and the chocolate work together perfectly. And I love the texture of the almonds. We've had four different croissants. The plain, the chocolate, the almond and the almond and chocolate. But my favourite is still the plain. I think my favourite would have to be the almond. Next up, we're moving on to the custard roll with chocolate drops. Yummy! There's lots of chocolate drops inside of the... There's a lot of oh. chocolate drops inside of the bubbles inside of the roll. Nicolina, why do you think they like using dark chocolate? Well, I think it's because of how sweet the pastries can be, so they use dark chocolate to balance the sweetness out. It's so soft, you don't even have to bite, it just like melts in your mouth. It's amazing. It's so fluffy and soft. I think, so far, this is my favourite thing of chocolate that we've eaten. Yeah. This is definitely my favourite. Out of all the chocolate, this is my favourite. Okay, next we're going to eat pa o reza. Which is this one? <laughs> so this is pastry with raisins. It looks... Tell me this doesn't look beautiful. The flavour of the syrup surprised me there because so far they've all had like the basic um, like they've all had quite a similar taste when it comes to the dough so when I got that different flavour from the syrup it was quite surprising In the middle it's like gooey so it tastes really good in the middle This is the first one we've got with fruit in it Because raisins are fruits Education with evening. You're welcome. This is much more dense, but it is still fluffy. It is. I think the syrup has definitely made the pastry a lot denser. But it still tastes amazing. The raisin one was definitely the sweetest. Now we're moving on to the plain custard. This one smells very buttery. It smells, I think it smells the most like the normal croissant. Because I'm getting a very buttery smell from this. Outside, it's a lot crunchier than the inside. The inside's got nice layers and it's really fluffy. This is definitely the crunchiest pastry we've had today. Okay, seven down, two to go. And now we're moving on to the chocolate drop brioche. It smells like panettone. And if you haven't seen that video, it's right over there. And the sugar crystals on top also reminds me of panettone. This is giving me real panettone vibes. <laughs> It's like a miniature panettone. I really like it, except in the panettone, I didn't know how to feel about the chocolate, but this one almost tastes better with chocolate. With the sugar crystals on the top and the dark chocolate inside, it tastes like milk chocolate, not dark chocolate. So the balance is really good for me. Last but not least, we are having the apricot flower. That definitely smells like an Oh, 100%. It also smells very custardy. The, the apricot adds a bit of tartness to the dish, so it's not sweet, but it's not savory, and I think, I think that goes really well. The custard makes the pastry taste sweeter, but then the apricot balances that sweetness out. I definitely understand why they put so much icing sugar on the sides, because at first I was like, quite a bit of icing sugar. But I think the icing sugar is almost to bring back some of the sweetness. Guys, please go and support this small business. You will not find this quality pastries in any supermarket. This definitely gets the eat me thumbs, thumbs up. up. 
You can definitely taste love and passion in these pastries. You should go and support a small business. You will not, not regret, regret it. it. Also, check out their Instagram and, and their Facebook. Facebook. And remember to like and subscribe and click the notification bell on our channel. Eat you later. Bye. Bye.